Whether you're focusing on business, brand, or your professional development, while you are dealing with the matters that are impacting your here and now, you also have to have your sights set for what's next. We're speaking with leaders on their personal journeys, on their stories, on how they have addressed the challenges of today while setting the stage for tomorrow. So here we go. A big shout out to the Dynamos, and we'll, we'll talk about the name of that and how we got there. Uh, but first, just really wanted the Dynamos to give an introduction, uh, talk about where they are, um, what their superpower is, and maybe what a marketing challenge is. And I'm gonna turn it over to Danielle first. Hey everyone, thank you guys for coming. Thanks Joanne for inviting this group. And I think, you know, the question about superpower is so interesting because for me, I always try to look external, not just what is my superpower, but how can that help others? And so I was thinking about this this morning and I think it's resilience and adaptation. And I think adaptation, when we talk about what's next in marketing is the absolute name of the game, but it also applies to personal lives, right? And one of the things, you know, as, as you go through the path that is life, realize a door opens, a, a path becomes available to you that you might not know where that's going to lead, but just opening that door, walking through it, having that community with you and continually being resilient and adaptive is how you learn, how you lean in. And that's both, you know, personally and then professionally to, to grow a business. So um, I think resilience and adaptation. So where do you work? So I work at Focus Brand, and for those of you that don't know that name, it's not what you're going to find at any of our storefronts, but we have some amazing and well-loved brands. So everything from Cinnabon and Auntie Anne to Jamba Juice, and then the restaurant side, some really large restaurant brands like McAllister's Deli, um, about to be a billion-dollar business this year, Schlotsky's, and then Moe's. So we are a portfolio group in the restaurant space that's really dedicated to bringing some amazing food-driven experiences and connecting with our customers. Okay, this would be like asking a parent who her favorite child is. Oh, it's so, that is such an easy question. <laughs> Welcome, welcome to New the Favorite. Welcome. Yeah, listen, you have a bias. You know what i Yeah. Okay, we'll come back to that, Danielle, and we'll let you go now. I just, for, so y'all know, I, I also worked at Focus in a past life, and I, I work on Cinnabon, so I think it's an easy question to answer. And, and we have a Cinnabon <laughs> and brand leader here, so anyways, um, she might say McAllister's, but I don't know what she's going to say. I wanted to know the answer. Um, Anyways, I'm Jill Thomas. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer of PJ Tour Superstore. Um, thank you guys for being here. I was mentioning to Nick this morning that PJ Tour Superstore is owned by Arthur Blank, and uh, he did not know that. That maybe a lot of people don't realize that we're a national, uh, especially golf retailer, the largest specialty golf retailer in the world, actually, and um, and happen to be owned by Arthur Blank, which makes it really amazing because he's all about customer experience and fan experience and um, um, more importantly giving back I think to the thing that is most important for us to communicate about what we do is yes we spell, sell golf stuff to people but uh, our purpose and our reason for being is to give back to others and if you know anything about Arthur uh, he signed giving pledge and uh, he is about that is what he's about and um and it means that that's really what we're about so i could talk about that for hours but that wasn't joanne's question so um i'll just resilience wow no it's a it's a get up given a billion dollars that you didn't know. Um, you know, the hard part about being a billionaire is the more time passes, the more money you have, and it makes it harder to give it away as fast as we want to. But um, anyways, uh, my superpower is I can see the future. Um, and I think any great marketer would tell you that they have some ability to look at the past and predict the future. And so I, I really think that is my superpower. Um and I think that's it. Oh, my challenges, my marketing challenges. So just quickly, um, do we announce for one, which of course means I'm going to tell you three, um, <laughs> how I roll. Um, and I'm going to go, you know, super high level, middle and, and very like in the weeds, right? So the super high is transforming a very traditional retail marketing organization to a modern marketing organization and could know anything about traditional retail. I will have a merchant ask me about direct mail on a regular basis or, you know, talk about flyers and things like that. 
in a world where we're really trying to drive more data integration and personalization. So right person, right message, right moment will always be the mission. And that's, you know, a town who very traditional retail environment. So that's my big, the big one, the, the middle space. And it's very relevant to my team and who I have a lot here today. And I thank them for being there and their support is evolving the marketing organization with the changing needs of the, of the organization. So that one is probably keeps me up at night the most because it's about the people. And um, as much as it is about the business. And then um, my third one is just, you know, finding the resources that we need to to get the job done on, on a regular basis. So anyways, those are the challenges. Um, I, they're probably at some level the exact same challenges that every person in this room has. Um, uh, so whether no matter what your role is, I think you're probably thinking about what's next. And you're thinking about how do I optimize the resources that I have. So we're probably all very similar in that way. That's great. <laughs> Hi, Catherine Town. Um, I'm a marketing consultant as well as I'm a marketing executive partner for HCI Private Equity Group. Um, they actually manage between 15 different portfolio companies. Um, I've been a marketing executive uh, for about 20 years uh, in, in focusing in that functional area, but across different industries. So mine's much different um, than others on the panel here. Um, I'm focused more on manufacturing, distribution, and service. Uh, so within that, both B2B and B2C. So very different environments. I've worked with both agencies as well as in-house teams uh, across that. But now as a consultant and with my arrangement with HCI, I'm able to assist anywhere from 12 to 15 companies uh, per year with their marketing initiatives and um, efforts. Um, I would say my superpower is looking at um, different situations, being able to kind of think out of the box and bring teams together. I definitely think collaboration, especially as marketing, um, you know, there's a lot of, they're in the forefront um, and we need to bring people along in the journey of what we're trying to accomplish because it's a team effort as we look at the entire company and their goals. Um, so it's not just a functional area, it's everyone needs to be involved. And so I, I would say that's my superpower. As far as um, challenges, I would say because HCI focuses on more mid middle market type of manufacturing service and distribution companies, um, my focus are really, the challenge there is to keep the team prioritizing and simplifying their plan versus trying to tackle everything at once. Um, so that's one of the main challenges as well as uh, personalization at scale, getting things uh, as far as processes and tools in place now to accomplish the vision five years down the road versus looking at what's my marketing plan for this year or next year. Um, definitely need to think about the overall scale and what we can do in connecting with the customer. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And I'm Joey and Harold. I own Harold Growth Consulting. Uh, my background though is Mostly in food, it's um, Arby's, Honey Baked Twice. I did have a stint, a global stint at Interface, which actually is all over the floors here. And the first time I met Nick, I was really kind of almost like, oh, this is so pretty, I remember this. Um, so I'd say my superpower is really team leadership, getting people behind a movement. Um, and getting people excited about what's next um, as far as marketing and growth. I'm all about growth. I'd say now that I'm out there a lot and I work with different clients, there's not one company or institution I work with who's not about growth. And they are looking for the marketing leaders to not only understand all the technology, what the consumer's doing, and as we know, the consumer has changed dramatically in the last three years, but also be the catalyst for change, change in the organization, um, you know, really driving what's next. Uh, so my, um, so those are what I'm seeing as challenges. I'm gonna turn now and I'm gonna turn to Danielle, but we're not gonna make her turn. <laughs> so um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the dynamos and how we met, we all met, and maybe what it's meant to you. And I'll ask you guys as well. 
Well, and, you know, if, as Joanne talks about bringing people together, you know, tons of credit to, to her for introducing so many of us. So in my past lives, I actually lived on the West Coast. I'm originally from Atlanta, UGA, go dog. But I had been on the West Coast for a number of years um, working at, at Petco. I worked at, at Caesars Entertainment and I was head of marketing for Build.com in the home improvement space. And when I moved back to Atlanta, Joanne's superpower is a thousand percent bringing people together, harnessing resources and being a dynamic networker and connector. And so through that, we met and talked and Joanne obviously had relationships and let everyone chime in um, on that part as well, but really brought this group together. We started in having conversations about what are we facing, you know, in our roles as heads of, of marketing or too many places where you come together and you, you know, really can share some of that, how do you help nurture that next generation of talent? How do you face some of these challenges? And really just talking completely honestly about that for good. And so we started doing some dinners and some connects and really came to say, you know what, this is a dynamic group of folks driving change, driving, mentoring, supporting each other. How do we lean in and lean on each other through that? And so the name Dynamos represents, I think, both of that. It represents that dynamic change in the energy as well as that support system. So I say credit to to Joanne, and it was a big part for me personally of getting back and connected into um, the the Atlanta scene and networking as well. So, how about you, Joe? Yeah, um, it kind of goes back to the CMO Club, which we were all fortunate to be a part of. Um, in the very beginning for me, when I first moved to Atlanta, I'm not from Atlanta. I'm a cater, by the way, because caters with it. No, no, we let her have that way. Yeah. And that they welcome me in. But um, I was at Focus, and I was new in role, and I was the first sort of big leadership role that I had had, and I was really seeking out a community, um, people that could sort of a safe space where I could ask dumb questions and I, no one would judge me. So my first CMO club dinner, I'll never forget, um, it was myself and a very relatable group of CMOs, uh, John Bridges from Chick-fil-A, Trish Mueller from Home Depot. You know Trish, that's super fun. And uh, Dow, from, who was uh, Georgia um, Pacific but now is Piedmont Health. And um, the world, my story is I was Cinnabon and, and I think our budget was a million dollars and they had billion dollar budgets and I was trying to like be cool and act like I was just totally like one of them. And I'm happy to say they treated me like one of them. And we had real conversations about those things that are challenging and my, like I said, my challenges, I'm sure the challenges of everyone, it's just scaling those challenges. And it was kind of a life-changing moment for me to realize there's people out there that think about the same things I think about and, and, and are willing to help me because that group was very willing to help me from the, from the very beginning. Joanne came in a couple meetings later as a speaker. She, um, Joanne is uh, very passionate about purpose. And uh, as Clem Long, especially Cinema on Again, it is a purpose-driven brand. I was very passionate about that as well, and I was really excited to hear her talk about it. And she's just a person, I call her the sun, and we're all orbiting around the sun, right? And so she's just a person you wanted to gravitate toward. And I don't know if she knew this, but I just then started stalking her and tracking her, and wherever she'd show up, I'd sit next to her, and we and wanted to be her friend, and she was nice enough to be my friend, and then brought really this group together. Catherine was there. There's one missing. We have, a, we have a missing dynamo, and we just were kind of a like-minded group of women uh, who, who were, you know, finding that community and the safe space to say the things we want to say, and I think it's inter an interesting group because we all bring very different things to the table. Catherine and Melissa have more of a, um, a, a manufacturer, CPG kind of a background. We have more of a, C we were all in food service at the time. So we're more sort of what's on trend, what's buzzworthy, you know, um, they're building brands, we're building energy and buzz. And um, we just like each other, to be honest. And uh, Danielle has the juice on everything, just so you know. And um, Joe Erin is the, you know, I would agree she's the heart and soul. Melissa is the pot. Oh, she's just a And I'm right there with her. So we'll, we'll stir the pot. They know what's actually happening in the world. And Catherine is the sweetest person who I've know. So she's just more like, what are y'all talking about? <laughs> so we just, it's a, it's a very diverse group of, of like-minded women who make it a priority to support each other. 
and and take time to be somewhere like this to support all of you. Um, uh, I I can say that with great with great confidence. Oh. I I do think it's funny. I just say this one last thing. Real story, and I, Daniel, I don't know if we've ever actually talked about this. We have interviewed for the same job multiple times. We, we all were like in the same space. I, I literally remember, and I'm going to talk about it, but I <laughs> an interview walking out and Danielle walking in. And the, the thing was, you, I wouldn't, you typically would like not like that. But I was like, oh, right, you're a good girl. Like, that's awesome. Like, and I knew, I believed one of us would, would get that job. And I think that's what makes us different. I don't know why that it we're like that. I, I like we're rooting for each other. And I, I mean, we're all, you know, mostly women in this room. That's not always the case. So I, I found that a very special dynamic among this group um, that we, we actually are really cheering for one another. And I'm, I'm proud of them. They've all, uh, now I, I think I'm the oldest one. I'm just saying I, I do think that and they've all gone on they're they're doing amazing things um i mean these two to brave their own new worlds of doing their own things is pretty amazing and i'm so proud of daniel um she she has really achieved and earned a, a really big job that she has and i'm I, i'm proud of it i i feel a little bit a part of it because uh we share some things and, and uh, I'm excited for her, but I, I'm just, I, I'm very proud of this group. I'm very proud to be friends with these people. Gosh, how do you top that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just think um, from my perspective, um, it was very unique for us to get together. Uh, you know, when you're at the head or lead of your function, you're in a, a management group or a senior senior group, and there's also, you know, your friends, but there's a certain level of understanding when you get to, you know, interact with other leaders within your space and to understand the demands, the challenges, and in your career is a journey. You have ups and downs. You're going through, you know, different different times. You're going through different t challenges. And so with this group, we were able to meet over dinner, over a glass of wine, and be able to, you know, use each other as a sounding board to say, hey, how do you feel about this? This is what I'm going through. Of course, we, you know, talk about, you know, different tools or, you know, things that we may be using and leveraging that. But there was a deeper level of understanding of what our challenges were and then saying, okay, what if you did this? And then recommending different type of situations. So you're always, you're not just venting, you're coming away with solutions. Uh, and I think that's very empowering. Um, and, you know, one of the challenges that I went through within my career and journey was that I thought it was time for a pivot. Um, and so I actually came to this group and I talked to them. And not only did they talk me through it, they called me later and they said, hey, did you do it? <laughs> so the, the accountability afterwards and making sure uh, that I was going through with what we had talked about, but then supporting, uh, I can't say how much I appreciate that. And, and honestly, I think we've seen, it's weird. I, I don't know how long this has been going on, like eight years, seven years, something like that, not forever. But um, it is weird the amount of things that have transpired across this group, high, the highest highs and, and and honestly, some of the lowest lows and, and just kind of seeing it happen in real time it, it's been really interesting and it does feel very much like a support system one and to your point that level of of depth right so what you're articulating of the highest highs the lowest lows and the actionable pieces i mean it's it's everything as a group of folks to really be able to say what's happening professionally and, and dig underneath right that's what you guys are talking about is being there to dig underneath and help each other but be amazing true authentic cheerleaders too because a lot of it and a lot of it for women is you know having that encouragement to say you can do this get out of your own head and your own worry have that confidence and have it with some great meaningful real specific advice from a group of of people who have walked in some of those shoes and so i think it's building the confidence it's you know, holding up that beer to say you you can do it and 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 you know i think you see that in a lot of the stories that joe and and, and catherine were talking about but then also the personal side of that right and and i think that's what rounds it out is to say we're there to lean in and lean on for each other um you know in that way on on the personal and professional side and it's um it's a rarity and i think that we talk about this a lot too is how do we back to what's next make it less rare in the world, mm -hmm. right? And that's really, and we, we talk about it almost every time we're together. How do we take what we've 
created that just happened organically and happened through humans, but amplify that in a more purposeful way and really, really encourage that for other people, other groups of, of leaders, other groups of, of women in the next generation. So true. So a um, little background story. They might not even know this. Um, so I was the president of the CMO club for a long time. And we'd have these meetings. I loved the CMO club, but I handpicked these ladies to go outside of that and to be friends with. And we started doing it pretty often. And so I text, I group named the group, the Dynamos. Mm -hmm. And so, um, anyway, just thank you guys for your friendship and being here. Yeah. I said, but I, <laughs> and naming it. Yeah. And naming it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was a branding it. And yeah, no, and it was, although she just kind of, I did it. What's that? I think you've a lot of fanfare, but just there was on the, uh, in the text. <laughs> the Hot House logo would be kind of cute. Um, <laughs> I'm going to ask you, Jill, what, how, I know you work with a lot of, um, the next gen. Um, what are you learning from them and what can they learn from our gen? That's whole AP for that. And non tonic. Yeah, non tonic. Um, so it, I, my team, like I mentioned, there's, there's several on here, so hopefully they'll go along with me with but in the lot. And it's, but I call myself the world's oldest millennial. Um, so I, I feel like, um, I just happen to be a person that very quick to adopt what's next. Um, I'm very comfortable in the what's next and, and I like to say I'm leading the way and what's next. And, and I, and I say that with humility. I don't necessarily think that's a great thing or a, a bad thing. It's just because sometimes you have to understand the pace of which the organization can move with you. And sometimes I get way ahead of my skis. I'll just be honest. And they're not shake. They're, they're being really careful not to shake their heads. I'm watching me to know them on the great play there. They've got their poker faces on, <laughs> but I know I push, I push the envelope really, really hard. So I think what they're teaching me is, you know, to keep it real, um, to keep it real, like, um, from it, from a, you know, I think it's really important to say the mission remains the same. It's been the same mission for 25 years, right? Person, right? Message, right? Moment, right? It is that simple. I always say there's only two things you need to know about marketing, right? Person, right? Message, right? Moment. And it's not about you. Right. If you know those two things, you are going to do big things. Right. And the how you do that is is where it's evolving um, on the media side in particular. You know, I learned something new, a new trick every day. Uh, it is extremely complicated. Um, the infusion of data and first party data and zero party data and all the data things. You know, it's, it is the most important thing, um, for us to embrace and understand. Um, so I, I, I feel really great that I have some, some really bright younger, that they happen to be younger. Can we, do we have, call it younger? Can we just say the next gen? I don't know. Like they're okay. They're younger. <laughs> and they're so smart because they, they don't. I see things as the way it used to be and the way it's going to be and the way it is today. They, it's native to them. I always say I'm a shifted American. They're a you know, shifted digital a person. They're native. And so they just see it uh, in a, a different dimension in their head. I have to be more, I have to think about it a little more thoughtfully. Like, for example, whenever I think about CRM, I go, it's a database, right? And there's rows and columns. It's not that complicated, right? I mean, you need to have, and I try to like simplify it from the old school to the new way. So I think, um, I just get inspired by their, the freedom that they live and think in and their, the, the, the no roles sort of mindset. Um, and just their ability to quickly adjust, to be, to be more, much more agile. I mean, I think that's the other thing that the next gen is pushing on us. I'm a purpose-driven person. I find that most younger uh, marketers are very purpose-driven. I am a, uh, I'm a very digital person. I, I have been for 25 years, which by the way, that makes me like a dinosaur, a digital dinosaur. <laughs> and to say 25 years of, of being digital is, is, is really a pretty big thing to say, um, believe it or not. So 
I'm just, I'm just, they push me. They push me in ways, they push me out of my comfort zone, and they have different sets of expectation. They, I keep talking about like they, they're in the room, by the way. <laughs> they're, they're just um, approaching things differently. But, but what, what the, the, what's the same is the mission is the same. We're, we're, we're on the same mission, and we just have a different, we're all having our own different approaches to getting there. And I think, I'll be honest, like I, I think I have something to offer to them as much as they have something to offer to me. And I think if we, and it goes back to what you said, which I think is the real superpower is collaboration and open minds, right? If we are open to new ideas and change all the time, which I am, I, I am very hard headed and very opinionated. Again, I got one smile out of that one, one, hey, no, a soup like yeah okay. <laughs> I, but i what i hope everyone knows about me is I, you can change my mind i'm not i'm not in like immovable object but i'm i just i guess maybe it's where we're fitting it's just you have to learn to make the to make decisions and sometimes you do it without all the information and you just have to keep moving forward and so I'll say some very strongly opinionated things and that sometimes it takes a very strong person to, to, to stand up to me um, and say, ah, you're, that's not correct, actually, or there's a different way. And I think when you do that with logic and reason with me, I'm very easy to move. Um, so, you know, I think we're, we're teaching each other a lot. Um, we're teaching each other about modern methods. We're teaching each other about modern mindsets of today's consumer. Just where they're coming from is different. Uh, and we're teaching each other, um, you know, how to be successful in the work environment, how to build the discipline of marketing. Um, there's, 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 it's infinite, you know, all the things. We could talk about all the things. But those are the things that are top of mind. I, you know, and the last thing I'll say is I have a almost 30-year-old daughter, which... By the way, I can't believe it. I'm looking in the camera. She's out there right here fully dying. How is almost 30 years old? Who will say things to me like, you know, you're working too much or you should take a time off. or And she really just doesn't understand sort of the way that we were being raised around work and, and, and work ethic. And so she, that I have some younger folks that are teaching me a little bit more about that, um, which I'm not quite there yet, but <laughs> I've been... <laughs> so anyways a, a lot to be learned and i think it's about collaboration and and openness things we we talked about let's pull together a group of the next gen maybe some of our mentees and i know mentoring and the next generation super important to you can you talk about the next gen and what you're seeing and absolutely you know um in, in my current role, and again, some of my team members here are over there, uh, <laughs> uh, part of the focus team, we are blessed to have a really powerful set of diversity, not only generationally, but in different perspectives, different backgrounds. Look, in the, in the food space, um, part of my team is, is the culinary team, right? And you talk about innovation, and we have so many different backgrounds there from a marketing standpoint so many different people with different areas of specialty coming together and really across the entirety of the organization. And so, you know, when you talk about mentoring, I think I have a perspective that's, you know, outside of where you're currently working, which I think is really important, but even internally as well. And one of the approaches that um, I think about is how do you do that in, in circles of impact, right? So you drop a pebble in a pond and how do you think about the different radius that you can have an impact? So one of the things that super important to me personally is people that work um, within focus, whether quite frankly, they report directly through you or it's another team, that's all part of that impact in that community. So setting up purposeful conversations that talk about, you know, where, where are you? What are your desires? Not today, not tomorrow, but who are you as a person? And what are you interested in doing down the road? What matters to you? Because I think to tie it back a little bit to what Jill's talking about in that last part of what's What's so important now, and it's the way the world has adapted, is that it's not just about a job and you dedicate time to that job, but who's the whole person? What's the whole desire? What's important to you and what's important to an individual varies dramatically from one human to another. So I think having those human conversations is sort of that first ring in the pond and impact and say, how can I help you grow 
you know, how do we remove barriers to that? How do we introduce you to things that open doors immediately in there? Second ring is how do you make that a little bit more scalable? And it was really cool yesterday, um, actually at Focus, we had a boundless leadership panel where we brought women leaders together from multiple very different parts of the organization. So the leader that runs our um, guest uh, service group, one of our executive uh, assistants to the CEO, someone that runs our CRM team, right? It's a really diverse group in operation. And here you have these women leaders talking much like this to a group that's in the room and also a group that's on the phone. And that's the investment that you can make at kind of that next circle, a little more formal, right, in the company of how do you bring people together and share those stories and speak truth. That's advice to kind of um, the next generation and, and even also everyone who's in that room and those leaders together, right? And then when I think about the, the next piece of that, it's leaning out into the community. So some of what the Dynamos do, we've talked about supporting each other, but also being purposeful for um, that that next generation. My, my daughter, um, one of my daughters is in the magnet program at Wheeler High School here, so STEM magnet program. And, you know, one of the things that I think about to help support that program is how can we bring leaders from within our sphere from work to come and tell real life stories to that group of folks so that it's, again, not just academic, it's not what do I do on my next test, but real life ways that you can start to share how you might apply a STEM type background into different different jobs. So, you know, as I think about that next ripple, you know, it's it's important for each of us to think about in those small ways, right? What can you do to kind of share and reach out to your community? Be purposeful in that. Find those opportunities. And as you start doing those things, again, you it, it's it's an interesting pattern, at least that I've experienced, where something you don't expect connects you, right? And that even goes back to to us. We started in the CMO club. But then there's a different connection. And all of a sudden, you know, it's that combination of letting it be organic, but also having to be very purposeful about what can what can you do and and what's that role that you can play to continue to to have that ripple effect in the community. That's awesome. So I'm gonna turn to Catherine and I'm gonna ask you, what would you tell your twenty five year old self? That's a great reflection question. Um, you know, if I was looking at my 25 year old self, when you're building your career, or at least when I was building my career, it was all consuming. Uh, I mean, I was willing to put in the hours, to put in the weekends, to, to pretty much commit 100%. Uh, and what I didn't realize then that I, I very much realize now is that it is so important to go outside of that and to build your network. But as, as you guys have talked about, a meaningful network that will support you and help you throughout the entire journey. Um, because when you're just focused and all consumed with your individual company or what's going on with your individual projects, um, you know, you become very isolated. And I think it, it's not helpful as you start to branch out and start to grow and learn. You really need outside you know, mentors, uh, people that can support you, networks to help you throughout that next stage. Because even though you're looking at um, what's important now, it's not going to be as important later on. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say. Yeah. How about you, Jim? I would tell myself to calm down slow down, take a look around, you know, it's very much what Catherine is saying. I was, I was, I still am to a big extent, so focused on the work of, in my life that I think other parts of my life have, I've been, you know, are affected over time. I, I think about packing up and moving here, you know, eight years ago, I left my family um, and my husband's family uh, back in Florida. And, you know, it's just, you kind of, you got to, take that moment to look back and and you say was it worth it well of course it was worth it I, I have the best job and I've had the most amazing jobs and I provide for my family and you know all those things but you know I, I agree I, I think you have to look around and, and really understand what's what's important um <laughs> this group knows what's happening in my personal life I, it will be impossible for me to get through this without crying today so I'll, I, that's the first one I'm going to try to pull it back right now and ask the baton but but we'll get to that we'll get to that later <laughs> I'm trying <laughs> how about you um what was the question 25 year old 25 year old self that's right 25 year old Daniel oh. 
my goodness. You know what? It, it's funny how much commonality there is in, in this conversation. I think I um, heard yesterday, and this was something in our, you know, focus again, investing and bringing the women's panel together as a part of that. One of uh, the participants shared something at the Women's Food Forum that she had heard from one of the speakers there, right? So again, the ripple effect. And it just resonated and I think captures part of what these ladies are talking about, which is there is, you know, work and execution capital, but then there's relationship capital. And absolutely, there's the dimension of holding a lens up to yourself and thinking about that well-rounded life, but even specifically in your work environment, to that 25-year-old self, it's not just how well you do the project you're working on because you can knock it out of the park you can exceed 200 percent of your objective you can get there you know 50 percent faster and that's important make no mistake i'm not saying you know just miss deadlines and <laughs> your point is that it's not it but you have to have the second part of that which is relationship capital mm -hmm. even in your work environment so being purposeful about who are your mentors who are your champions you do need to be talking about from a peer, they're talking with from a peer setting and building those relationships with, and who really is interested in you and your career growth and what can you do to go nurture those relationships and create those connections? Because that relationship capital is what helps to foster your career. And so don't overlook the equal importance of the relationship capital and finding and identifying and deepening the connection with those mentors and the peers within your organization too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll echo the relationship now that I'm a consultant. Every client I have has been somebody I've worked with before or through a referral. So it's um, never burn a bridge, never uh, you'll, and especially in the food world, we, you know, we've got Mandy here, we've got Misty here. It's um, everybody kind of moves around. And um, so those relationships are so key. Um, so I think what we're going to do, Christina, is open it up for questions for about eight to 10 minutes. And then we'll close out and we'll talk about Elizabeth and um, which is important to this group. So if if there's questions either on the phone or in the audience, we'd love to take those. Oh, I mean, it's made the support for the, you guys have support for just, have there ever been any instances within that where it's been, a bar from Julian, like, well, the top love situation. Oh, how come you guys like broken eight habit or anything or were phased or from working each other? Absolutely. I'd say we, we've come with problems and you know, we'll, and Melissa, who's not here, she's the, she's you know, girl, you got to put it. Yeah. And, uh, and then Catherine, she's usually like, well, let's style it back a little bit. Maybe. Um, you know, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a tough love that you're talking about the accountability. It's not just, um, you know, we come with problems and just vent, uh, as I was mentioning, um, we, each one comes with their own perception of the solution. And if there's no movement, then definitely everybody <laughs> questions it, especially, uh, I think, you know, with the support, um, it's, you know, phone calls or texts or, you know, our next meeting, they'll always say, Hey, what did you do? We want to hear <laughs> how, so I think there was, yeah, there was some Definitely using the principles of radical candor. I mean, I, I definitely, you know, if you know the the principle of radical candor is you care enough to be honest and direct with someone. And I think that's where, what, you know, where we're at. And I'll, I'll, I won't out anybody else's stuff, but I'll use my own. I mean, I was in like the lowest professional moment of my entire career. And uh, you know, I, I, I it, it, which is a scary place when you're the, the provider and you're the, you know, it's your career and it's not just, um, I don't feel like doing this, so I'm going to quit and, and look for another job, which by the way, is what I ended up doing, which is really scary. But I think it was because, you know, the confidence that the group was able to build in me that I could take a dramatic, like, don't, you know, that is, not a place you want to be, you know, um, you know, just b pumping me up, telling you it's going to be okay, even when you can't see it in the moment. 
and tough love of, you know, you could sit here and wallow in your pity or your sadness or you're, you know, be frustrated or you can like take an action. You own, you own your career. You own what's happening in your life. Um, believe in what you're doing. And by the way, we'll be here to pick you up. And, um, and they did. And, and so, you know, definitely radical candor, you know, again, I'm not going to answer this point to anyone, but everyone on the panel and, and even the one that's not here, we've, we've all made job changes. We've all, um, tried to balance parenting and, and working and a lot of other things. So, um, you can't, I don't think you can have the kind of relationship without having authentic honesty and, and sometimes, you know, tough, tough love, or I, I like to call it radical candor. So well, we definitely be that. But all, mostly it's a pretty awesome group. So there's no slackers up here. I went to the end. <laughs> Get it together. <laughs> you know, kind of the opposite, actually. More, you know, calm down. Yep. Yep. So um, in the space where... As women and as executives, you are juggling so many different hands, to your point. Um, you're leading your companies, your mothers, wives, caregivers, um, aspiring entrepreneurs that, you know, branch out and have your own consultant firm. So what is the one word that you kind of use as your anger to maintain work-life balance? Because you have to be super intentional with your career, super intentional with your family, super intentional about your own well-being. What is the one word that is the common thread that keeps you male? So it's interesting. Yeah. Uh, speaking, and I will speak my own personal truth. Um, I, I, I've had an interesting journey. We have five kids. My husband and I um, blended family. He actually adopted my two biological kids. We've been through a lot through that. And what I will say, and I've made some intentional choices about my career and actually moments where I stepped back because I think we're not doing ourselves a service. And again, this is my own truth as saying there is that work-life balance. I, I think balance puts puts so much on you as an individual that's not realistic. I think it's all about you feeling empowered to make the decisions of what are your priorities, what's important to you, where do you want to spend your time and your energy. And so I like your word intentional, and I think you have to empower yourself, and that is okay, but the, the myth of Somehow you can balance all of that and it, and it just miraculously works out equally. That's not true. You're going to have times in your life and it will ebb and flow, but you have to make those decisions and be intentional about it. Feel empowered and feel comfortable in that ownership. And, and again, that's just for me personally. And I, I, if, when I came to that, it, it freed me because there was a period of time where I was like, I'm not doing any of this well. And so you have to find that intentional decision. And for me, it was pulling myself off of a certain career trap and mauled a lot of travel. Um, and it was even a further demanding job and couldn't be happier with that choice for where I needed to be as a person in that moment. And when I, I realized that I wasn't failing, that it's not a miraculous balance answer, you have to make choices. And whatever is important to you is absolutely wonderful. And guess what? You still get to do amazing, incredible things, right? It, and it it was a, there wasn't a downside to it, but it's freeing yourself from that and saying, what are my priorities and what's my intention? I'd say the same. It's scheduling. It's making sure what's most important. I pulled myself out of a job where I was traveling all the time just to be closer to home. Um, I'm going to tell on Kate for a minute, we went to lunch this week and she was talking about her big job and all she's doing. She's got three kids and she decided to be the mystery reader at her daughter's school. And, you know, sometimes you just have to say, you know, this meeting's just not that important. Being a mystery reader for my daughter in her school is the most important thing. And, and so again, making those choices. I, it's, it's, it, this is why we're a really close group because we all think exactly the same. And, and to echo it, uh, you know, I think the, the myth of, of balance is unhealthy. Um, it's technically impossible, right? 80% of your waking hours, you're at work. So there's no way to have balance. So what my one word is flexibility. 
Um, I try to give it and I, I, you know, I appreciate it when it's given to me. Um, and, and definitely the ebbs and the flows. Uh, we, it's interesting to hear everybody say that. I mean, I see even Catherine has gone through this too. Stepping away from something that you think is defining you and, and like your badge of honor. And then you're saying, I just, I can't do that anymore. And because it was impacting so many, you know, my, my every other part of my life. Um, so I would say flexibility, um, you know, because at the end of the day, time is really the only thing. Your time is the only thing you can control. Like I, that, that's just sort of how I, I see it. There's probably, probably, there's a, there's probably other things, but time. So like I have very, you know, I don't know if my team even knows this, like Sunday night, if there is any available time on my calendar, I immediately block it. I do that every Sunday night. I am trying to be very, like, I try to, like, not have, I'm not one of those people that blocks their calendar all the time every day. But uh, but Sunday night, I go, if you don't know in the next five, you know, if you, if you have figured it out, you need me. I'm going to block every bit of time because that's, otherwise, I would never get anything done. And I want, I need time to do work, too, as much as, you know, it, it just, I know you guys have a lot of heads nodding, so I know, you know, you come to work and then it's not your own life. It's like you're there to support everybody else. And if you don't protect the blocks of time on your calendar to to be the mystery reader, that's so important. Um, you know, you're not gonna get to do it. So you gotta you gotta take ownership. I see the calendar in like three blocks every day. It's morning, lunch and after lunch, by the way, I was on the lunch in like eight years. I don't know who does that, but I'm doing it today, by the way. But, I don't know. It's just, uh, you know, own it, own, you know, take control over it. And to your point, don't be a victim to it and say no when you have to. I mean, I think that really is the hardest thing, especially where you guys are in your moment, right? It's a lot harder for you to just say no, actually not you, because you're pretty good at that, but well, and you own it, like you're in control. And I appreciate that about you is you're not victimized by what's happening around you. And, um, sometimes for younger, I think for younger leaders, that's hard to do. They feel like they're obligated to say yes all the time. Um, you know, that think about how you do that, but, um, yeah, flexibility is my word. Yeah. And I would just say to close it out, I mean, it's very similar, but I would say what I started to do was kind of do an exercise in my mind, um, say, will it matter in a year? Because I was always staying late. I was always giving what I thought I needed to. But then I started realizing for me personally um, that nobody was n noticing except my daughter when I wouldn't show up, uh, at, you know, for certain occasions. And so I started to have to think, okay, is it going to matter right now if I give this additional two hours or will it matter if I go over here and spend some time with her? So it's it's mindfulness. And also I liked what you said, and I've really become accustomed to not being a victim to your own calendar, being very intentional, blocking off the time, but doing that because if you don't, everything's going to creep into it. Yeah. So true. Yeah. Christina, how, how are we doing on time? We can follow you when I get up and introduce. So what what I would love to do is um, we lost a friend, and I'm going to have Danielle tell a quick story, and then we wanted to honor her and then talk about what the Dynamo's commitment is moving forward. So this is a part where I'm going to try not to pry. No, no promises for this one. So Joanne's talking about Elizabeth Charles. There it goes. She um, was my old boss about over a decade ago now. She was the chief marketing officer at Petco. And really it was the point in my career where after she left Petco, I ended up running um, marketing there and then moved into CMO roles myself. And Elizabeth is an amazing human above all else, an incredible mother, and so dedicated to mentoring. And so she probably single-handedly showed me how to show up as that true senior leader. When you're sitting in boardrooms, when you're sitting on an executive leadership team of a company, and then how do you never ever lose sight of giving back to everybody on that human level? And so Elizabeth was diagnosed with cancer um, very quick. And 
you know, her for the lesson and watching that community and the ripples of the cons have been amazing. If you guys go look up Elizabeth Charles on LinkedIn and some of the posts about her, you'll just see thousands and thousands of people that she impacted in every role. And, you know, this is a woman who her intellectual horsepower and her talent was boundless. Uh, Harvard educated, ran marketing in Victoria's Secret, um, chief marketing officer at Petco, at Athleta, um, Old Navy, and so the list goes on. But above all else, she was a networker and a connector and a nurturer. So she actually was um, president of the CMO club that you heard us reference uh, before in, in San Diego and California. Um, she started a similar group of women called Girls Night Out um, when she moved to this Bay Area. And, and very similar to what we're doing here and actually on the notes to me at the time, she had, she had started that to continue that level of nurturing. And then she's so intentional about nurturing the people below her. And so, um, you know, from from opening her home, uh, from connecting, you know, our children when I lived there, from teaching me, like I said, how to show up as a senior leader, and then really that importance of the human connection. Her impact was absolutely amazing in the world is lost a fantastic person. That's part of all. Thank you for sharing. Um, so I knew her through the CMO club is similar to AMA where you as chapter presidents, you know, the other chapter presidents and we, uh, went to conferences and got the great pleasure to meet her. And then coincidentally, this is yeah. how this all kind of came to be. Yeah. It's where it's a little hard for me personally, but I did, I, I had met her. I did not know her the way that they did certainly not. As Danielle did, um, but someone I know who she impacted made a post about it, told her story, and because I'm going through something similar, I shared that on LinkedIn, and Danielle saw it. That's why we're sitting here today. So, by the way, this is not me personally. My husband has brain cancer. So, and Jill is, I know, not only doing everything she does at work, but she's also the caregiver at home. And um, yeah, it's all the things we've talked about, but it comes back to the, the strength of community and the people. They just went up to me. Uh, so these women here today. So with, with that, I know, um, Nick, do you want to yes. talk? Once we heard about the Dynamos Ooh. and the missing member Thank of the you. Dynamos, uh, our team was inspired. Michael Matterjack, actually, he's in our Chicago office, put something really special together. If you have an envelope, could you open it up inside and we'll find a card? We're on one side and talk about now to next, featuring the Dynamos. And it has a QR code. If you open your phone, scan it, we'll then turn it to the back. It'll say for you to put your phone over the image of Elizabeth. It will animate the story of her message around empowerment. And we thought it was just one way of honoring her to the fact that her spirit still lives with the Dynamos and that everyone that um, is part of the Dynamos network who wants to feel empowered that that spirit always exists with all of you. And Bob, thank you. So I'd, I'd say in closing, you are all now dynamos. <laughs> you're, you're part of our network. Um, our commitment is to do what Elizabeth did and it's mentor and guide the next generation and support each other. So I'd say thank you to Hot House for putting this together. Thank you to the original OG Dynamos for being here. And um, it is a, a little bit of a minor miracle that we were able to get these four women here together in the same room. And, um, but thank you so much. And um, we'll, you know, afterwards be here if you've got any questions, but really thank you to the thought crying. We're not Hilly Cryer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,